All right, all right. How are you all? I hope that you all are doing great. And today we are here to start with and end the session some basic concepts of chemistry. Uh, now, this chapter is named like this in your NCRT book. However, uh, actually, it is mole concept and stoichiometry. And uh, today's aim would be to basically ace our bores, ace our J mains, and as well as, uh, you know, J advanced. Yeah, so I will start from the very basic, the very fundamental things that you already know from your 9th and 10th standard from your junior grades. But then as we keep going uh, up, we will increase the level and we will go till the GE advanced. So are you all ready with me? Yeah? Okay. Now, um, let's talk a little about the story of chemistry. And you know that, you know, nobody really, really likes chemistry, isn't it? And uh, even from the very beginning, nobody really wanted to stumble on chemistry or discover chemistry. So what happened was, uh, you know how human beings are all, have always been the most greedy, right? So all we wanted to do was find two things. Number one was uh, elixir of life. We wanted to be immortal. And uh, another thing that we wanted to discover was the philosopher's stone. Basically, we wanted to touch things, touch any other metal and make it into gold, right? So you see, how? why did, why did I say that we are horrible creatures? We were greedy and we wanted to be immortal. Nobody should be able to kill us. And just, we must have everything you know with us right that's what we wanted now when we kept searching for these two things we figured that uh, there is something called as chemistry right but however in India that uh, trend was always there it was called as Rasayan Vigyan and uh, in Sanskrit and it was always there right even when uh, the archaeologist they dug out a lot of excavations and the old and some BC era, like before Christ era, uh, you know, sites, they figured and they found out that uh, even in those days, people used to use uh, mud bricks, which was roasted, right? So I think um, that can be considered to be one of the very first chemical reactions and sort of like this. So basically, that's how we stepped into chemistry and now we know what chemistry is, right? What is chemistry? Chemistry is basically the study of atoms and the transformations of atoms into molecules and then we study about ions and, and this is what chemistry is. The field basically deals with the study of atoms, ions, molecules and the transformation of these things, right? And then when we talk about atom science and all of these, you also know that we speak about something called as nature of matter. But even before that, what is a matter? Do you know what is matter? Oh, well, you, I'm, I'm pretty sure that everybody knows about it. But even then, let me just write it here that matter is anything that has mass and occupies space, right? Yes, what is matter? Matter is anything. Let me write it down here. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space right yes okay now look at the definition. What is it? It says that matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Oh my God, if that is the case, then there are probably tens of thousands and billions and millions of matter around us, right? And everything is matter. Yes, the stones that you throw, the pen that you write with, the pencil that you write with, the eraser that you erase with, the blackboard, the pen, everything and anything, the air that you breathe, the water that you drink, all of it is matter. So if there are so many things that are matter, you understand that uh, you cannot sit and study about billions of things, right? You'll be like, mom, we can't complete chemistry only, mom, there are three parts of chemistry only, how will we complete one billion matter? Exactly my point. Which is why we come to the fact that, uh, you know, we, we tried classifying the matter. So, of course, classification we will do a little bit later. However, states of matter. Matter is found in three states. States, you know? Yeah, and not a Karnataka and Tamil Nadu and all of that. States of matter is solid, liquid and gas. Okay. Now solid obviously is rigid. It's not compressible. You cannot compress it. Even if you try and compress, for example, this remote, right? If I, even if I try to compress it, I'm not the incredible Hulk that I will be able to break it. 
right yeah so it's rigid yes it has a fixed shape you see it has a fixed shape it has a fixed volume and it cannot be squashed it's not squashable right now when we move to liquid we see that liquid is not rigid now do you see that both of them are not rigid which is why we call them to be what we call these fluid okay liquid and gases are called as fluid because they flow okay because they flow right so they do not have fixed shape of course liquid does not have fixed shape you pour it into a bottle it will take the shape of the bottle you pour it into a swimming pool it will take the shape of the swimming pool you pour it into a, a, a bucket it will take the shape of the bucket right it does not have a shape everybody knows it very basic it does have fixed volume though if i take one liter of water and if i pour it into a, a very 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 huge tank let's say it will still remain as one liter it's not going to get reduced to 500 milliliter or it's not going to increase its volume to two liter at all right so yes liquid have fixed volume and they cannot be squashed i mean just a little bit maybe they are a little bit compressible but not as much not as incompressible as solids and not as compressible as gases right yes now we go to not rigid yes gases are also not rigid they do not have fixed shape they do not have fixed volume either so if you take 1 liter of gas and if you pour it into a 20 liter bucket it will expand so much that it will take up all the 20 liter of volume okay but it changes its volume basically the volume changes okay and it can be squashed that is it is incompressible not incompressible it is compressible cool great okay now did you know that these states of matter you can actually convert them they are inter the interconversion of states of matter happen okay so let's take a look at the process let's write solid here everybody okay let's write solid here then let's write liquid here okay and then let's write gas here okay so what will we see we will see that we will see that if i want to convert liquid to solid or solid to liquid let's say yeah solid to liquid what will what will it be if i have to convert solid to liquid what do i do solid to liquid is called as melting isn't it this process is called as melting which everybody knows i'm sure right yes next is let's say that again now this time let's do liquid to solid yeah liquid to solid if i have to do liquid to solid what do i call it i call this process to be freezing isn't it yes all i have to do is take some water and put it in the deep uh, freezer the refrigerator it will turn into ice correct exactly okay then what happens is all right let's come back here now if i want to do liquid to gas yes what do i do liquid to gas liquid to gas is known as very simple very easy evaporation am i right am i right yes okay but if i want to convert it to gas to liquid what do i call it condensation again very simple very easy right condensation great then now if i want to convert gas to solid any idea what is this called gas to solid my dear student this is called as deposition this is called as deposition yes and then if i want to convert solid to gas solid to gas what will be solid to gas called as solid to gas is called as sublimation it's called as sublimation all right please 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 pardon my handwriting i know it's really bad and i'm trying with every class to improve it but i guess uh, <laughs> age is also a factor here i think it's too late to uh, make it better but anyway all right so i hope you understand this right so these are these are the processes that they follow deposition and sublimation might just be a little bit new to you but i'm pretty sure that if you have studied your junior grades very well you already know it yeah yes deposition is the process when solid when gas 
to solid directly conversion happen okay directly the conversion happens gas does not go through the liquid phase and then get transferred to liquid but gas to solid directly that's when it is called as deposition and sublimation you must have seen it in naphthalene balls the moth balls that you see it smells very nice you put it in your wardrobe or in the wash basin right that's that's yes so naphthalene balls when you keep it for a very long time it just vanishes after some days because it has completely converted into gas okay yes so this is your interconversion then we come to the physical properties of matter so uh, not not physical properties properties of matter but obviously properties of matter is divided into two parts that is physical properties you call it what physical properties yes and there is obviously chemical properties as well now what is physical properties right what are physical properties physical properties whenever we say physical properties we are actually talking about something that you just look at it and you can identify like something that is to do with your appearance yeah yeah so if i ask you what are my physical properties you will be like ma'am you have a short hair ma'am you're wearing a blue color specs ma'am you're wearing a red color suit or so, something like that yeah so the, these sorts of things are are your physical properties but you you don't know anything you don't know much about me right my chemical properties would be what time do i get up in the morning what do i do in my free time uh, where do i stay all, all of that will be my chemical properties things that you probably don't know about me right yeah for which you really have to know me only then you will uh, you will get to know about those things yeah so physical properties when we say we mean to say that physical properties are basically you know the states of matter appearance these are physical properties yeah so what are physical properties states of matter states of matter was physical property yeah then comes your appearance appearance is also a physical property okay yes and then when you come to chemical properties you know acidity yes if a substance is acidic or basic that's chemical property basicity if a substance is basic or not yes that's also a chemical properties does a substance go through combustion or not so combustibility combustibility is also a chemical properties all right so these are the properties that are chemical properties and these are the properties that are physical properties done deal yes we will not be studying much about it yeah because you know our aim is to understand mole concept and stoichiometry we will decode that also don't worry about it then we come to classification of matter so you understand what i told you that billions of things are there and you cannot really sit quietly and study all the billions of things can you can you come on is it even humanly possible who would want to do that nobody we are, we are not you know that that person right yeah we are very very how do i say ambition oriented like all we want to do is our end goal is to clear our je mains or je advance isn't it exactly so who does have the time to go through all of these so what what do we do we classify what is classify classification is basically putting things into different groups what is it putting things into different groups that's called as classification so when we want to classify matter broadly as in a uh, bade paimane pe the uh, major quantity in the major amount right yeah so when you want to classify them into broad categories then you then you call them as pure substances and mixtures i hope this is clear pure substances can then be divided into two categories that is elements and compounds elements you know gold silver yes gold silver iron copper nickel all of these nitrogen oxygen fluorine bromine whatever yeah all of these the periodic table of elements that that's element those are your pure substances and then we come to when elements combine and they form compounds yeah like water and sodium chloride yes and uh, ammonia these are all your compound now you might want to ask me this question that ma'am but in a compound there are already two elements how can you call it pure substance tell me something let's say that i want to drink some water right would i want to have some dust particles and you know a uh, <laughs> straw of jhadu or uh, you know some uh, uh, stones in my glass of water would would i want that no 
when i say that i want to drink some water i actually want to drink just pure simple water which has h2 and o which only has hydrogen and oxygen and that my dear student is your pure substance it is a compound water is a compound or when i want to have uh, you know i want to buy sodium chloride yes what do i want to buy tata namak deshka namak shuddh namak <laughs> right do i want to get some atta grains in it and uh, dal grains in it and you know rice grains in it no i only want simple sodium chloride that's it so you get my point when i'm saying that pure substances compounds are also pure substances yes so elements and compounds these are your pure substances okay and you you know what guess what if you want to break them apart right these pure substances if you want to break them apart you cannot do it with just simple physical reactions or simple physical process okay what did i say you cannot break them with simple physical processes you know let, let me not write this and make this dirty i think that you can write it on your book on your on your book yes but chalo let me write it only yeah you cannot break them you cannot break them with physical processes like physical processes you have studied about right winnowing hand picking and all of that with that you cannot separate them correct then we come to mixtures mixtures you know that haldi rams bhujia and tana bana and all of that where there are peanuts and uh, raisins and almonds and that you know uh, the green peas and there are those uh, corn um, flattened corn and all of these are there mixtures yeah exactly so that is a mixture basically that is actually a mixture like lot of things are combined in it but uh, you know they, they are not chemically tied to each other they just together they are just together but they are not chemically tied so if you want you can actually physically separate them just just pick them apart and that's it right yeah so in case of mixtures we can divide them into two categories the one is homogeneous mixture and one is heterogeneous mixture when we say homogeneous mixture we mean that here there is uniformity you will find uniformity in case of homogeneous mixture you know and you understand uniform right in school you wear uniform right now you go to school no there is no covid yeah you go to school right so what do you do like in my times our uh, school uniform was so i was in a kendriya vidyalaya kv right it was white shirt and uh, blue skirt and everybody used to wear it so what is uniformity similarity everybody is exactly the same yeah so homogeneous mixture means that it is uniformity so let's say that i want to make a solution of salt and water so there is a glass of water and in that i have put one spoon of salt i've mixed it well and now when i'm sipping the water do you think that i'll be making faces i'm like oh my god so salty and in the next one hmm seems nice oh my god so salty hmm fine do i keep doing that no or the whole glass is going to be exactly the same taste isn't it see uniformity uniformity right you get my point exactly so that is salt water your mouthwash all the alloys these are homogeneous mixtures okay and then we come to heterogeneous mixture where there is no uniformity basically so i was talking to you about that haldirams bujia that mixture thing right now that mixture thing what did i say it has peanuts it has raisins it has almonds it has that green pea thing it has the flattened corn everything Now, do you think that I have a guarantee that every handful of mixture that I take, can you guarantee that there will be five green peas and uh, four almonds and three raisins and uh, two peanuts and one flattened corn? Do you have a guarantee like that? Can you guarantee that? No. So what is it? Heterogeneous. There is no fixed proportion in it, right? There is no fixed proportion in it, and in exactly the same way, my dear students. Let's take the example of pizza. Can you guarantee that every slice will have exactly the same amount of basil and tomato and corn? No. So these are your heterogeneous mixture. Okay? Yes. moving on from here everybody so like i said that there are endless number of matter right 
that means that we will need to quantify them in in chemistry we know that it is the study of transformations and all of these so that means there needs to be a way to measure these things right correct how are we going to measure it how are we going to measure it so we have five fundamental or sorry not five seven there are seven fundamental units which help us in measuring these uh, you know quantities okay which are these mass masses symbol is small m uh, si unit is kilogram symbol is kg okay length is l name uh, name of si unit is meter and symbol is m okay time symbol is t name of si unit is second and symbol is s by the way sec is something that a lot of students write please know that's not the symbol the symbol is only small s okay that's it the symbol is only small s okay yes then comes current current is capital i si unit is ampere symbol of si unit is capital a okay then comes temperature symbol is capital t si unit is kelvin and symbol of si unit is capital k all right yes then comes amount of substance which is n name of the si unit is mole which we will be decoding which we will be studying just hold on hold on hold on and then the symbol is mol then comes luminous intensity symbol is i capital with a subscript v yes then the name of the si unit is candela and symbol is c d all right yes okay so these are your fundamental units now let's study about these fundamental units a little bit in the detail okay yes many students in fact why students many grown ups even today they uh, you know interchange this words mass and weight and they think that it is the same thing but hey actually you know what it is not the same thing so what is the difference yeah what is the difference let's let's write it down here this is mass let's say and uh, this is weight okay yes so what is mass number 1 what is mass mass of a substance is actually the amount of matter that is present in the body what is mass mass of a substance is let's say mass of a substance is the amount of matter present in a body any body right it can be anything okay yes mass can never change by the way mass of a substance is constant okay mass can never change so mass of a substance is constant all right yes okay then comes to weight what do you think about weight weight my dear stu students it, it's a force that is exerted by gravity what is weight force exerted by gravity all right yes and this can change weight can change it may vary from one place to another because of change in gravity yes so weight may vary from one place to another due to change in gravity so tell me something now do you understand this picture yes do you understand that why weight here is 200 newton only but here weight is 1200 newton so if you go to the moon 
you might feel like, oh, I'm, I'm cool, I'm, I'm not uh, fine, I, I don't really need to w lose any weight. You might feel like that. <laughs> Whereas in Earth, we are all like, oh my God, I have been sitting in my home during the whole COVID period, so I need to go to the gym, right? That might not be the case when you go to the moon, okay? So weight changes, but mass, however, does not change, okay? All right, then we come to density. So what is density? Everybody knows that density is basically mass by volume. So this, this triangle, if you can remember during your exam, it will be great because uh, take a look at it. Let's, let's draw it again here, okay? Let's draw it again here. Let's draw a triangle and let's divide it into three parts, okay? Let's write here density. Density is uh, denoted by rho, R-H-O. It's a Greek letter, yes? Kind of like a cursive uh, P. Then you write here mass, that is M, and then you write here volume, okay? So if you want to uh, figure out the formula of density, see, density is equal to M by V, do you see it? M by V, so you can just write it here, M by V, that is mass by volume. Now if you want to figure out what is volume, volume is equal to obviously mass by density, can you see it, mass by density, yes? And if you want to figure out what is mass equal to, mass is equal to, density into volume okay density into volume do you realize this yes so this if you can remember it will be very easy in your board exam if at all there is some calculation that that comes okay all right now in case of density there are two things okay in case of density there are two things one is your absolute density what is your absolute density yes now, absolute density for uh, solids and liquids, right? Absolute density for uh, solids and liquids. What is it? This is your case one. Absolute density for solids and liquid, it is the absolute same. This is basically mass by volume, okay? That is your absolute density. All right. Then comes something called as relative den density. What is it? Then, then comes something that is called as relative density. So let me write that here. Relative density. What is relative density, my dear students? Relative density is basically density of a substance divided by density of water at 4 degrees Celsius, which is basically 1. And this whole thing is called a specific gravity. Let's write it down. You will understand. Relative density is density of a substance divided by, what did I say? Divided by density of water. Okay. Divided by density of water at 4 degree Celsius, this is actually equal to 1, okay, this is equal to 1, the denominator is equal to 1, yes, and this whole thing is called as your specific gravity, okay, what is it called, it is specific gravity, and by the way, this is unitless, this is unitless, right, this is mass by volume, so it will be, you know what is the SI unit, right, gram per milliliter not not it's not SI unit but this is basically gram per milliliter and this is unit less okay all right then we come to so I have only told you absolute density for solids and liquids now you must be thinking ma'am, what about gas ma'am you haven't told us about gas let me tell you about gas also yes so let's talk about gas here okay absolute density for gas Absolute density for gas will be what? Uh, do you know this PV is equal to NRT? But before that, absolute density for gas can be written as C. D is equal to PM divided by RT. You know what is P? P is pressure. What is R? R is the gas constant. T is your temperature and M is basically the mass. Okay. All right. Now, we have to also find out the relative density of gas, right? So, let's do that also here. Okay, what is relative density of gas? Check it out here. What is going to be relative density? Any idea, my dear students? Yes, relative density here is going to be um, density of a gas with respect to another gas. Density of a gas 
with respect to another gas at constant pressure and temperature okay relative density is density of a gas with respect to with respect to another gas at constant pressure and temperature okay so that means if i want to write this okay if i want to write the same formula same formula take a look at it p is constant t is constant r has always been constant it is the gas constant right so that means that i can write it as d is equal to m and i have written here the density of a gas with respect to another gas that means i can also write it as d1 divided by d2 is equal to m1 divided by m2 obviously understood everybody yes so this you can remember it don't worry about it if you are not able to see here don't worry i'll be providing you the pdf in the telegram channel please do join the telegram channel it will be provided to you the moment this this video is uh, getting premiered you will be getting the notes in the telegram channel don't worry about it at all if you're not able to write it down it will be provided to you okay you can just listen to me now we come to another fundamental unit that is your temperature okay now temperature can be actually measured in degree celsius degree fahrenheit and kelvin please note what did i say degree celsius degree fahrenheit but i did not say degree before kelvin because in before kelvin you do not put any degree kelvin is the si unit but degree celsius and degree fahrenheit are the ones that are most popularly used in india we highly use degree celsius and uh, in in uh, usa and etc they use fahrenheit okay all right so let's talk about the conversion how can you convert okay if celsius to fahrenheit you have to convert this is your formula degree fahrenheit is equal to 9 by 5 into degree celsius plus 32 if you are asking the question that where does this 9 by 5 come from let me tell you let me explain this okay here check it out boiling point of water boiling point of water in degree fahrenheit is equal to in degree fahrenheit do you know how much is it it's 212 okay it's 212 degree okay and then when i say freezing point of water freezing point of water okay degree in sorry degree fahrenheit still degree fahrenheit in degree fahrenheit is do you know how much is it 32 degree okay 32 degree all right yes okay now if i if i do 212 degree minus 32 degree how much will i get my dear bachas how much will i get i will get 180 yes 180 degree great 180 will be the answer the same thing i'm going to do it for also degree celsius okay now look here boiling point of water dig in degree celsius is what 100 degree celsius right yes and then if i have to write freezing point freezing point of water in degree celsius is what 0 degree celsius yes so that means if i have to do 100 minus 0 is obviously equal to 100 correct yes now check it out here bachcha log 180 divided by 100 if i have to solve it see what happens 0 0 cancel yes 2 fives are 10 and 2 nines are 18 so 9 by 5 are you getting 9 by 5 yes you are getting 9 by 5 correct so this is the 9 by 5 that you are writing it down here and 32 you are adding this freezing point here okay all right and then when you are converting fahrenheit to celsius what you do is you just interchange the 
interchange the fraction here because now what you will be doing is 100 divided by 180. So when you do 100 divided by 180, it becomes 5 by 9 and then degree Fahrenheit minus 32. That's it. Easy peasy biryani tasty. Don't forget to write EPBT in the comment section if you are understanding. Do let me know if it is helping you or not. How am I going to understand if it is helping you or not? Okay. You have to tell me. Okay. All right. Moving on from here then. Moving on from here. Then we come to something called a scientific notation. Now what is this scientific notation? Well, 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 guess what? We spoke about fundamental units and the fundamental units and the SI unit are, uh, how do I say it? It, 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 let's say that it's kg right yeah it's kg but what if i don't want let's just say that i go to a shop and i don't want 5 kg of potatoes but i only want half a kg now what is half kg 500 gram you see i had to step down from the si unit right it was kg but from kg i had to come to gram and we already know that in chemistry we deal with huge number of atoms ions and molecules isn't it we do right yes so now do you understand that we needed a suffix or a prefix at certain times we needed a bigger quantity than SI unit and there are certain times when we needed a smaller quantity than the SI unit which is why we had to come up with something called a scientific notation basically in scientific notation you see that Terra has 12 zeros here so you write 10 to the power 12 Giga you have 9 zeros here so 10 to the power 9 Mega has 6 zeros, so 10 to the power 6. Kilo has 3 zeros, so 10 to the power 3. Deci is 0.1. Now the 0 is before the 1, right? 0 is before the 1. So what do you write? You write minus 1, 10 to the power minus 1. Let me tell you something. In mathematics, you must have read now 1 by 10. How do you write 1 by 10? 1 by 10 is only 0.1. And 1 by 10 can also be written as 10 to the power minus 1. And easy peasy, that's exactly what it is. Yeah? Okay? Then comes centi. Centi is 0 0.01 which means that it is 10 to the power minus 2. Milli is 0 0.001 so it will be 10 to the power minus 3. Micro is 0 0.123456 6 zeros here so 10 to the power minus 6. Nano is 10 to the power minus 9. Pico is 10 to the power minus 12. You can remember this but apart from that there is also femto and all of that right. Angstrom and all of that. that that's there, there in your book you can read about it. Okay. All right, guys. Yeah. Chalo. Moving on from here. Now let's learn about accuracy versus precision. So I've seen that in board exam, many students do struggle about it. But you know what? No, don't even read about all of this. Let me tell you something. This is actually accuracy versus precision. 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 Yes. Accuracy versus precision. So you know what is a dart board, right? This is called as a dart board. So you have the darts and then there is a board. You just throw it like this and the dart goes and attaches itself to the board right if you have a very good aim then you have like six darts around so you can just throw it one two three four five and six now let's say that all of them actually hit the bull's eye the central point that means that you have good accuracy you have good precision but but let's say that you don't have a good aim like me People like me, I don't have a good aim. When I throw, it might hit the refrigerator or the TV also at certain point, which I have done it. <laughs> right? So look at this. I throw and what happens? One, all the three of them goes way beyond the central point and it goes and attaches itself somewhere. Now this is bad accuracy. Yes, I was supposed to hit here, right? I was supposed to hit at the central point, but what I did was I was hitting it here. So this is very poor accuracy. I was not at all accurate, but good precision. Good precision because all of them are, see, all of them are hitting at the almost same point. Understanding? Yeah. Now what happens? Look at this, okay? Here is one dart, here is one dart, here is one dart. What does this mean? This means that your accuracy and your precision both are horrible. I think this is more me. This must be me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can put one to the refrigerator, one to the TV and then done. My, my friends will be like, what are you doing? Exactly. So that happens to me. Now read this statement. Precision is the degree of closeness of the measurements with each other. So when you measure something, let's say that you are measuring your weight 
and the weighing machine says that your weight is uh, 25 point your weight is let's say 35.5 the weighing machine says at once it one time first time it says 35.5 second time it is saying 35.6 and third time it says 35.4 so do you see the closeness in the measurements it's only 0.1 that's your precision that's your precision yes the degree of closeness of the readings with each other get it yes accuracy is the degree of closeness of the measurement to the target reference value actually your weight was let's say actually your weight was let's say 36.5 so 36.5 and 35.6 there is a difference of 1 kg are you getting my point so that is the accuracy that means that 1 kg difference there is a difference of 1 kg in the accuracy but there is only 0.1 difference in the precision got my point yes easy peasy biryani tasty so you will be getting the notes just write it down in the definition if at all it comes in the exam you will be getting full marks cool let's do a question here let's do a question the question is 18.72 gram of a substance x occupies 1.81 cm cube what will be its density measured in correct significant figure now you might be thinking that ma'am this is very easy question but believe it or not even in je mains they have asked questions from significant figures so just don't think that it is very easy and skip the topic out yeah okay so uh, 18.72 gram of a substance that means mass is given yes mass is given mass is 18.72 gram right and then density is also given no no not density volume is given volume is uh, given here see volume is given to you that is uh, 1.81 centimeter cube what do you have to find you have to find density so density is equal to mass by volume as you know which means that 18.72 divided by 1.81 now significant figures do you see that one eight one there are only three significant figures please read that statement read that paragraph about significant figures in your ncrt and it is written that if there is a zero before the number you don't consider is a significant figure if there is a zero between two different digits like one zero eight three significant figures okay if it is one zero eight zero four significant figures but if it is zero one zero eight zero it is still four significant figures the first zero will not be counted okay so that means that here you have three significant figures so if i make it 18.72 divided by 1.81 i think i will be getting somewhere around uh, 10.4 yes so 10.4 gram per centimeter cube option c seems to be the correct answer and only this has three significant figures this also does have so if you just calculate you will see this has four this has four this has one two three four five six six so this cannot be correct answer this cannot be correct answer and always see that which one has the lowest significant figures and in this case the lowest significant figure is 1.81 this has 4 it has to be this okay you have to consider the lowest significant figure in uh, lowest significant figure in the um, question all the values that are given in the question in that compare whichever has the lowest significant figure that is the one that you have to consider and then you have to find the answer all right easy peasy great moving on now now we have to understand the laws of chemical combination for elements and compounds this is also going to be very simple very easy don't worry about it so there are uh, five laws actually there are five laws but there is one additional law that also we will talk about okay the first law is law of conservation of mass this is very simple very easy this means that whatever you are taking in the reactant side that is what you will get in the product side for example if i take h2 plus if i take o2 that means let's say that 2 gram of h2 if i take and 16 gram of o2 if i take i must get i must get 18 gram of o2 yes the law of mass mass will be conserved you cannot create mass you cannot destroy mass so what is written it says that in simple terms this law states that matter can neither be created nor destroyed 
the total mass that is sum of the mass of the reacting mixture hydrogen and oxygen these are reacting mixture and the product formed is water it will remain constant see this side also it is 18 gram this side also it is 18 gram and on your right side also 18 gram both the sizes 18 gram 18 gram okay so this was given by Antoine uh, Levoiser in the year what is written here 1789 nobody will ask you the year of course it's not a history exam chemistry exam but just if you want to be intellectual ever and you want to talk about it you can you can brag about it that I know the date also I know the year also sure okay all right this we have understood now law of definite proportion what does this say this says that jo uh, joseph proust yes proust gave this uh, gave this law he said that uh, that 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 uh, the proportion of elements by weight in a given compound will always remain exactly the same in simple terms Achha, chalo, let's say that um, i take some water from drain yes let's say that i take some drain water yes then uh, my friend uh, took some water from australia let's say australian water <laughs> and let's say that another friend of mine they took some rain water now from wherever you are taking the water my dear students wherever you do it will always be h2o h2o and h2o it will always be 2 gram of hydrogen reacting with 16 gram of water producing 18 gram of water uh, producing 18 gram of water 2 gram of hydrogen reacting with 16 gram of oxygen producing 18 gram of water 2 gram of hydrogen reacting with 16 gram of oxygen producing 18 gram of water so it doesn't matter from where you are taking the compound the ratio in which these uh, you know ratio or the percent in which the composition the constituents are present will always be same getting my point yes it will always be two hydrogen atoms one oxygen atom two hydrogen atom one oxygen atom two hydrogen atom one oxygen that won't change so it will always remain exactly the same in simple terms we can say that irrespective of its source origin or its quantity the percent composition of elements by weight in a given compound will always remain the same understood yeah it was easy great now comes something called as law of multiple proportions okay let's understand this law states that if two elements combine to form more than one compound two elements let's say that carbon and oxygen yes carbon and oxygen they can combine and they can form co2 they can also combine and they can form carbon monoxide right yes are in the ratio of small whole number understand this so what he is saying is c plus o can form co2 c plus o can form carbon monoxide right now if i consider this here what what will i get if i consider this take a look at it take a look at it yes yes take a look at it what will i see what will i say here huh what, what is the uh, chalo, chalo, chalo. Uh, let's let's calculate the mass let's calculate the mass okay yes this law states that if two elements combine to form more than one combined uh, more than one compound the masses of these elements yes the masses of these elements tell me for co it will be 12 okay yes and for this it will be 32 right right everybody correct so that means that if i do let's say 12 by 32 what will i get 12 by 32 will be how much Mm -hmm. tell me tell me tell me tell me tell me no 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 wait 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 there is a, there's a, mis there's a, there's a small mistake sorry 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 ha huh. this is a 32 wait a second wait a second this cannot be ha huh. yeah sorry 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 yeah so here you see that this will be 32 and here it will be 16 isn't it yeah 16 right okay all right so 12 32 12 16 right this is 12 this is 12 so 12 
32 12 16 great okay now if i do 32 by 16 yes if i do 32 by 16 yes what will i get i will be getting 16 and then 2 so 2 is to 1 2 is to 1 now is isn't this small whole number ratio it is a small whole number ratio let's read it again it says that this law states that if two elements two elements carbon and oxygen combine to form more than one compound 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 one carbon dioxide compound two carbon monoxide yes the masses of these elements in the reaction okay 12 and 12 see in both the cases it will be 12 12 masses of the masses of these elements in the reaction are in the ratio of small whole numbers here it is forming 32 here it is forming 16 so 32 divided by 16 it give, gives you 2 is to 1 that's it yes simple easy peasy great now let's come to another reaction that uh, another law that is called as law of reciprocal proportions okay what is this so it states that when two elements combine separately with a fixed mass of third element okay two elements c o yes yes all right all right okay or let's say that H is also there okay so two elements they combine separately with a fixed mass of a third element then the ratio between their masses in which they combine will be either same or simple multiple of the ratio in which they combine with each other it sounds a little confusing but try and understand see let's take that C and O and they are yes they are reacting with a third element H okay c and o forms what co2 yes c and h forms ch4 okay h and o they form h2o right yes okay now when the combining elements is c c is combining at 12 okay all right yes h is combining at uh, uh, let's say 4 because ch4 right yes do you see this do you see this and o is combining at uh, what 32 o2 right o2 16 plus 16 32 so 32 okay yes now check it out check it out check it out check it out okay in both the cases c when it reacted with o it it was reacting with 12 c when it formed uh, c when it formed ch4 it was still 12 okay yes now the ratio of hydrogen and oxygen let's let's check it out the ratio of hydrogen and oxygen 4 by 32 check it out 4 ones are 4 4 eights are 32 correct 4 ones are 4 4 eights are 32 the ratio becomes 1 is to 8 correct now see the ratio of h2o what is h2o h2o is 2 and 16 isn't it 2 is to 16 that means 2 ones are 2 and 8 yes that means this ratio is also 1 is to 8 yes so did you understand now states that when two elements two elements carbon and hydrogen let's say okay carbon and hydrogen separately with the fixed mass of third element that is oxygen yes then the ratio between their masses in which they combine will be either same or it will be just a multiple of small whole number easy peasy understood if you understand what do you say la 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 in the chat box okay yes yes if you're happy then you say la 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 okay Chalo, moving on now we come to the fourth law that is your gay lussac's law of gaseous volume okay all right the fourth law says that uh, the fourth law says let me take this this pen looks better hmm. this law states that when gases are produced or combined in a chemical reaction they do so in a simple ratio by volume given that all the gases are at the same temperature and pressure this law can be considered as another form of law of definite proportions let's let's check it out what exactly do we mean here is that uh, let's say that uh, we, we take h2 plus cl2 and it is forming let's say 2h cl okay yes all right so that means that check it out one volume of h2 yes one volume of h2 plus one volume of cl2 
is giving you two volume of HCl. Am I right? That means that if I take 30 ml of hydrogen and 30 ml of chlorine, that means that I must get 60 ml of HCl. Okay? All right? That's all. That's all. That's all that they mean here. Okay? If I take 30 here, if I take 30 here, then I must get 30. The 60 here. Okay? This is all that it means. And finally, we are reaching there. We are reaching there. This is your final one, final law that is Avogadro law. This proposes, okay, this says, this says that, this says that under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, okay, an equal volume of all the gases contains an equal number of molecules. For example, let's say that I take a container here, I take a container here and I take a container here, okay, yes, pressure is constant. Temperature is constant, let's say. And same here also, pressure is constant. Yes, temperature is, let's say, constant. That means it is same, same, okay. If that is the case, and let's say that here you have H2 ga gas and here you have O2 gas, then the number of molecules, the number of molecules will be equal, equal. Number of molecules will be equal, okay? And what is the number? The number is 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 and that is given a special name which is your Avogadro number, okay? The number is 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 and that is called as your Avogadro number. It's given a special name. One question? Let's do a question here. Chal. How much mass of silver nitrate will react with 5.85 gram of sodium chloride to produce 14.35 of silver chloride and 8.5 gram of silver nitri sodium nitrate if law of conservation of masses array of masses followed? Okay. So according to the question, we have how much mass of silver nitrate that is AgNO3. This is not given. This is X, right? will react with sodium chloride NaCl how much is it 5.85 gram right yes and it will form silver chloride so AgCl that is 14.35 gram right plus what are you getting you are getting sodium nitrate so NaNO3 how much are you getting 8.5 gram okay so basically what you have to do is, basically what you are going to get is X plus 5.85 is supposed to be equal to 14.35 plus 8.5. All you have to do is X is, is equal to 14.35 plus 8.5 minus, yes, minus 5.85, yes. So you calculate this, you calculate this, how much will it be? 14.35 plus 8, so 14 plus uh, 8 would be, let's say, I think uh, 22, 22 minus 5 is uh, how much? 22 minus 5 is, uh, is, is, is how much? 22 minus 5 is around, uh, it won't be exactly 22 obviously. It'll be a little more than that. So I think it'll be around 17. I think it'll be 17. Yes, option C is the correct answer. Great. Next question. See, this has come in J mains. Not what I was not kidding. See, significant figures. Okay. Tell me, using the rules for significant figures, the correct answer for the following is 0 0.02858 uh, multiplied with 0 0.112 divided by 0 0.5702. Okay, so this is a question that you can actually not pick up your pen and you can answer. Do you see that the significant figures here is only 3? Three? 3 is the least significant figures uh, uh, figure uh, as per the question, right? Yes. Now, let's, let's check it out. In which answer will we have only 3 significant figures? Here, do, how many do you have? 1, 2, 3, 4. Wrong. 1, 2, 3. This is right. 1, 2, wrong. 1 only, wrong. 
without even lifting the pen without even calculating anything you can get the answer and this has come in J means not even kidding you can check it out you can check it out J means 2019 or 2020 in I think shift evening in in the shift 2 it has come you can copy the same question and write it down in Google Google will tell you it has come very simple very easy right you can easily get four marks isn't it exactly my point okay moving on now we come to Dalton's atomic theory all right so what did Dalton bhaiya say what did Dalton Anna say or Dalton uh, Cheta okay <laughs> so Dalton Anna said that matter consists of indivisible atoms yeah he said that matter has indivisible atoms atoms which you cannot break it down yeah which was proven to be wrong later on but at that point of time dalton bhaiya definitely did something very revolutionary right then he said that all the atoms of a given element they have identical properties including identical mass they have what identical properties they have identical mass that was also proven to be wrong Ay -ay -yo. identical mass was not there in isotopes only no so that was wrong now atoms of different elements they differ in mass okay that was right but that was also not really right do you remember there are also those uh, those atoms uh, which which have same mass but different atomic number different number of protons different number of electrons remember yeah that is also possible so compounds are formed when atoms of different elements combine in a fixed ratio okay Chemical reaction involved reorganization of atom and these are neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. Made sense, right? Yeah. So, this is what he said. Of course, it was proven to be wrong. And we saw it in structure of atom, if you remember, right? Thomson came, Rutherford came and all of that happened. And if you haven't watched, please watch structure of atom. And if you have watched, then you can definitely continue here, okay? Now, let's come to atomic mass. So, Dalton gave, uh, Dalton gave the first atomic theory. And then we come to atomic mass. What really is atomic mass, Baba? Right? Now, atomic mass had different, different scales, right? Yeah. So, we had an oxygen scale, we had a hydrogen scale, and then we had a carbon scale. Carbon scale actually fits us the best. Why? Because there is an isotope which has a mass exactly equal to 12. Carbon 12 isotope. Okay? So, that carbon 12 isotope, if you divide it into 12 number, okay, let's say that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. If you divide this carbon 12 atom into 12 parts, then one of the part, okay, this, this shaded part, Yes, one of them, one twelfth the mass, okay, you have divided it into 12. So, one twelfth, one twelfth the mass of carbon 12 atom is one atomic mass unit. So, one twelfth of carbon 12 isotope is your one AMU, one atomic mass unit which we now call it as u u is unified mass okay now let's read it the atomic mass of an element is basically the average relative mass of its atom on a scale in which an atom of carbon 12 has a mass 12 unit carbon 12 is isotope carbon 12 carbon 13 carbon 14 these are isotopes of carbon isotopes you know right isotopes have what same atomic number different mass number so carbon 12 has a mass of 12 the mass of it is 12 okay all right that if you divide it 12 times see how you divided it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 you have divided into 12 times one of the part after dividing into 12 parts one slice if you take out from here that is equal to one atomic mass unit that is equal to one atomic mass unit understood that is equal to one atomic mass unit or one u okay that's what we say got it yes now we come to average atomic mass 
भाई वाई डू वी नीड एवरेज अटोमिक मास वी जस्ट कम्प्लीटेड अटोमिक मास यू नो वाई डू वी नीड एवरेज अटोमिक मास एंड रू इन आर यू नो स्लीपलेस नाइट्स अनदर टाइम वाई वेल डैट्स बिकॉज आइसोटोप्स आर ऑल्सो देर नो बिकॉज देर आर आइसोटोप्स सो हाउ कैन यू हाउ हाउ कैन यू जस्ट राइट वन मास डोंट यू थिंक यू बी अनफेयर टू द अदर अदर आइसोटोप्स If I only write carbon twelve, the carbon thirteen and carbon fourteen will be like, hmm, why didn't you take my mass, <laughs> right? <laughs> Just kidding, <laughs> right? And that is why what we have to do is so average mass of an atom is div is divided by one by twelve mass of an carbon twelve. Okay, that is that becomes your atomic mass. This is what this is your atomic mass. But average atomic mass is given. See, if you are given this kind of da data, we will solve it. We will solve it. If you are given this kind of data, what you have to do is this multiplied with this, this multiplied with this, this multiplied with this, and then divided by hundred. That will give you average atomic mass. That will give you average atomic mass. We will solve a question. We will solve a question. I'll solve you. I'll make you solve a question. Then you will understand it better. Chal. Now let's understand what is molecular mass and formula mass. Molecular mass is basically the sum of the atomic masses of the elements, whatever atoms are present in a molecule. All the atoms that are present in a molecule. For example, if I have a H two O molecule, two hydrogen plus oxygen's mass is sixteen, it will be eighteen. Eighteen is the molecular mass. Now, if I take an ionic compound, for example, NaCl. right if i take an ionic compound yes and then if i have to find the mass here i will find the mass of na i will find the mass of cl let's say this is x let's say this is y it will be x plus y okay all right that is it that's your formula mass so this becomes your formula mass this becomes your formula mass all right and this is your molecular mass cool yeah let's solve a question now The question is the main drawback of Dalton's atomic theory is anybody what is it it could not explain the law of gaseous volumes okay it could not explain why atoms of different elements have different mass sizes yes this is also true this is also true it could not explain how and why atoms combine to form molecules absolutely right so basically option d all of the above is the correct answer d for doremon you call me nobita ma D for Doraemon. <laughs> All of the above is the correct answer. Okay, now solve this and you will understand how to calculate average atomic mass. Okay, tell me. Uh, oxygen occurs in nature as a mixture of isotopes. There is 16O, 17O, and 18O having atomic masses of 15.995, 16.99 uh, U, and 17.999 U, and relative abundance are given like this. This is what is the average atomic mass. Okay. All right. So let's calculate it here. I thought there was space, but chalo. Okay. Basically, what you have to do is check it out here. Fifteen point nine 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 U into what you will do is um, average abundance this this with this. Okay, so multiplied with ninety nine point seven six three. Okay, plus plus what will you do is sixteen point nine 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 U multiplied with zero point zero three seven. All right, plus. What you have seventeen point nine 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 U multiplied with zero point two double zero. Okay, all right. Then all of them divided by hundred. Do this and tell me what is the correct answer. Do this and tell me what is the correct answer. Yes. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come. While you do this, I think I'm gonna drink a little water. You must also. It's a. You must also drink some water. Come on. Done, guys. Done. All right. The correct answer is option A. Okay. I think it is option A. You you let me know. And that that's what was clicked here. That probably must be the answer. All right now. Okay. So let's decode. Mole concept and molar mass. Now we have come to the best part of the session. I think everybody, are you all up, guys? Let's do this. Okay. So before we understand mole concept and molar mass, Ajay, tell me, have you heard about pair? Yes. When I say a pair of gloves, 
right when i say pair of one pair of gloves one pair of gloves what does it mean one pair of gloves means there are two gloves right one right hand one left hand okay now if i say one pair of or let's say that there are two pair of two pair of monkeys if i say two pair of monkeys bachcha log what does it mean that means that there are four monkeys right what does it mean four monkeys means basically what you do is 2 into 2 multiplied with 2 right yeah okay now if i say that there are 10 pair of 10 pair of banana of course the monkeys will come baba 10 pair of bananas that means that 10 into 2 what will you do 10 multiplied with 2 that's equal to 20 right so that means there are the number now number of bananas are 20 great understood awesome okay now if i say that uh, let's take a dozen here let's understand dozen have you do you know what is dozen yes if i say one dozen of one dozen of uh, egg one dozen of egg that means that there are 12 eggs right yes if i say 2 dozen 2 dozen of uh, donkey 2 dozen donkey means how many are there 2 into 12 yes it will be 2 multiplied with 12 that means 24 donkeys are there right exactly my point now tell me mole what exactly is a mole i say when i say one mole of let's say one mole of donkey one mole of donkey is basically the number is 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 donkeys if i say one mole of train one mole of train what does it mean it means again 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 now if i say 3 mole of 3 mole of jupiter the planet 3 mole of jupiter the planet what will it be it means that 3 into 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 you get my point yes you get my point yes everybody now imagine you are given a question let's say okay let's say that you are given a question here and the question is find find number of moles number of moles of uh, train only let's say train only okay find number of moles of train okay number of moles of train in 12.044 into 10 to the power 23 what will it be how will you find number of uh, number of moles you have to find number of moles see if one mole of train is this one mole of train you already know right what do you know you know that 1 mole is equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 now you are asked in this much in this amount how much is there so that means what you will do is 12.044 into 10 to the power 23 divided by 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 this cancel this cancel 6 cancel 6 into 2 so find the number of moles of train how many moles of train are there answer is 2 you have two moles of train and exactly the same way now if you are asked calculate the number of moles of atoms you will be able to calculate calculate number of i number of moles of iron you will be able to calculate calculate number of moles of molecules you will be able to calculate just like how you calculated moles of donkey monkey train exactly the same way you have to calculate for atoms ions and molecules yes so if i say one mole of donkey 
6.022 into 10 to the power 23. 1 mole of train, 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. 1 mole of donkey, 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. 1 mole of egg, 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. 1 mole of human, 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. 1 mole of atoms, 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. 1 mole of ions, 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. Easy peasy biryani tasty. Mole concept is clear. Have you decoded the mole? You understand this? Amazing. Moving on now. Now let's clear the definition. The definition says that one mole of a substance is the amount of the substance that contains as many particles or entities as there are atoms in exactly 12 gram of 12 C carbon. You remember this? 12 C carbon. 12 C carbon in this 1 gram of this 12 C carbon, how many atoms are there? You know, there are 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 atoms in this 12 gram of 12 C carbon. Okay, so the number of entities in one mole are important and it is given a separate name that is called as your Avogadro constant, which is denoted by yen a. Okay, yen a. Yes. Now, the mass of one mole of a substance in grams is called its molar mass. If you take mass of one mole of a substance, okay, let's say one mole of train, one mole of train is 6.022 into 10 to the power uh, 10 to the power 23. If I have to find this, if I have to find the mass of this in gram, one mole of a substance in grams, it will be called as molar mass. So, the molar mass of the train will be very huge obviously, but you understand, yes. So, this is numerically equal to your atomic or molecular or formula mass that is expressed in U. Understood guys? Yes? Great. Now, let us understand. Now, this is, this is a diagram from where you can remember all of it, okay. If you are given mass in grams in W, then you multiply, then you divide it by molar mass and you get the number of moles. In the question, when you are doing numericals, if you are given mass in grams, let's say that 69.008 gram of sugar, find number of moles, just divided by molar mass. If you are given that these many number of 3 mole of sugar is taken, find mass in grams, multiply by molar mass, okay. If you are given number of moles and you are asked to find number of molecules, multiply by molar mass. If you are given number of molecules, you have to find number of moles divided by molar mass. If mass in grams is given and you have to find number of molecules, multiply by molar mass. If number of moles is given, you have to find mass in grams divided by molar mass. You getting my point? Let's, let's write it down also. Okay? What did I say? If weight is given. If weight is given, what will you write? Yes, what will you what will you do? You will write that W divided by molecular weight, which is your mole. Okay, all right. Yes, if number of entities are given, if number of entities, that is number of moles, are given, number of entities are given then what will you do yes then what will you do you will only do n by n a yes n is so you what you will do is number of entities number of entities divided by n a avogadro number okay yes now, next one is uh, if volume at STP is given, STP is standard temperature pressure, okay. If volume at STP, standard temperature and pressure is given, then what will you do? Okay, this you have to remember, okay, this you have to remember. Then what will you do? What will you do? What will you do? You will take the volume in liters, yes, and then divide it by 22.4. This will be equal to your N, okay. All right, this is something that you don't have to take a screenshot because like I said, I will be providing you the notes so you can check it out later. Chalo. 
this is something that you have to remember very important these are all the things that i have just told you so 1 mole is equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 particle atomic mass or molar mass 22.4 liter of gas at stp which is what i just wrote one gram atom is avogadro number of atom that is again 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 that becomes your gram atomic mass. If you take 1 gram of atom which is equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 gram atomic mass. Yes, this will become gram atomic mass. If you take 1 gram of molecule which is equal to Avogadro number of molecules that means it will become gram molecular mass. Okay, alright. Okay, great. Now we come to something called as percentage composition. You guys are understanding, no? Yeah. Am I going too fast? I hope I'm not going too fast. Yeah. All right. Chalo. Let's start. Percentage of composition of a compound. What does it give? It gives a relative amount of each element present. Like how much percentage is there? Like let's say that if there is glucose, right? In glucose, how much percentage of carbon is there? How much percentage of hydrogen is there? How much percentage of weight, uh, oxygen is there? That and all you can calculate. How? Mass of element divided by mass of compound into 100. That's it. That's it. That's it. So let's do a question here, okay? And the sum of the percentages of each element in composition should be 100. Let's do a question here. Uh, what if I tell you, what if I tell you that uh, find percentage of C in glucose? Percentage of carbon in glucose. Will you be able to find it? Will you be able to fi find it? Chalo, let's write it down. So, glucose uh, molecular weight is 1.80. Molecular weight of glucose is actually 180. Yes, and formula of glucose as you know, C6H12O6. Right? Yes? Okay. So basically what you have to do is, what is the mass of carbon? The mass of carbon here will be 6 into 12, yes, divided by 180 into 100. Find it out how much it, it is, that will be the answer. And that way you can find it for hydrogen. What is the percentage of hydrogen in glucose? What is the percentage of uh, oxygen in glucose? All of that you can calculate, okay? All right. Now let's come to this called empirical formula and molecular formula. What is the difference? You understand that molecular formula is basically the actual ratio in which the elements are present. Okay, what is molecular formula? Actual ratio in which the atoms are present. in a molecule okay and what is empirical formula empirical formula is the simplest ratio in which the atoms are present. So as you can see, C6H12O6, this is glucose, yes, and this is the actual ratio in which carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are present. But if I have to ask you that what is the empirical formula here, the empirical formula will be CH2O. It's the simplest ratio. 6 into 2. 6 multiplied with 2 is 12, right? So all you have to do is 6 and uh, C and, I mean, carbon and oxygen, you keep it as it is. Hydrogen, 2. That's it. Easy peasy. N4O8, NO2. H2O, there is no simplest form of H2O. So you just write it as it is. That is H2O. Great. Okay. Understanding everybody? Amazing. Moving on from here then. Oh, there was a note here. There was a note here which I already wrote it. The empirical formula is the simplest whole number. Ah, the definition was there basically. But anyway, I wrote on top of it. You can check it out later. Oh, there is another one. The definition is here also. <laughs> I forgot that there was definition. I wrote it on my own. I think let's just erase it then, right? 
let's erase all of it it will be easier for you right it will be easier for you so the molecular formula is the exact number of different types of atom present in a molecule of a compound great guys understanding everybody awesome all right guys so let's solve a question yeah what is the mass of carbon dioxide which contains the same number of molecules as are contained in 40 gram of oxygen okay so first of all what we are going to do here is uh, let's 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 find out the uh, number of uh, number of no let's find out the molecular mass of oxygen okay let's find out the molecular mass of oxygen hey uh, sorry if you thought like i was not looking at the camera i was trying to look at the obs if it is getting recorded or not so molecular mass of o2 here yes what is molecular mass of o2 my dear student molecular mass of o2 would be 32 yes 16 plus 16 32 correct right everybody great then we find out molecular mass of co2 molecular mass of co2 16 plus 32 is 44 makes sense nonsense makes sense okay great now let's find out number of molecules of o2 what will be number of molecules of o2 everybody number of molecules of o2 will be given mass given mass is 40 here see 40 divided by 32 into n a right avogadro number you multiply correct if you do not know don't worry about it we will do these also how to find all of that okay then what we will do is let's take number of molecules of co2 See, the question says, what is the mass of carbon dioxide which contains the same number of molecules? Same number of molecules are contained in 40 gram of oxygen. So, can I not write this exactly? I can write, right? It should contain same number of molecules of as oxygen, right? So, that means that it should be 40 divided by 32 into Na. Am I right? Am I right? I am right, right? Okay, great. But, 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 we also know that if I take this to be, if I, if I, if I, I do not know the mass, right? I do not know the mass of carbon dioxide. So, I can also write it as M divided by 44. I do not know the mass. So, my given mass is M, let's say, given mass is M and my uh, molecular mass is 44 into Na. Am I right? That is also possible. So, that means that I can equate these two, right? It should be M divided by 44 into Na is equal to 40 divided by 32 into Na, right? So, this cancel, this cancel. Now, then just solve it. Just solve it. What will you get? Solve it. What will you get for M? M will be equal to 40 divided by 32 into 44. Just calculate this and you will find the answer. Whatever is the answer. Find it out, guys. What is going to be the answer, everybody? Hmm? I think you can figure it out. Tell me. What is going to be the answer? Answer should be, I think, option B. Yes. Answer should be option B. Right? Calculate that number. I think you will find it. Right? I am not going to solve this also for you. Chalo. Now, for the following reaction, the mass of water produced from... 445 gram of C57, H110, O6 is 257. Okay, this is the reaction given. And guess what? This question has come in the JEE main. So, let's try to solve it, everybody. Shall we? Shall we? Shall we? Yes. Are we all with me? No? Who all are with me? Nobody. Chalo, let's read the question. Read the question, everyone. Read the question a little bit. I think you can do it. I really think that you can do it, okay? Chalo, if you don't know, no worries. Let's calculate here, okay? So, what is the given mass? See, let's write the given data here, okay? So, given mass of C57, H110, O6 is, what is the given mass of water produced from 445 gram? Correct, -o? That is what is given to you. Great. Yes. Now, molecular mass. Ooh, that you will have to calculate, guys. Molecular mass. 
What is molecular mass? Calculate quickly, quickly, quickly. Tell me. 57 into 12, right? 57 into 12, all right. Plus, what will you do? 110 into 1. Plus, 6 into 16. Hey, what is the molecular mass? Molecular mass. Calculate this and tell me. Calculate this and tell me. I think it would be a little more than 445, around, uh, around uh, 57 into 12, 110 into 1 and 6 into 16, 890. 890? Yes, is it 890? Okay. Now, 445 divided by 890 is equal to how much? Hmm? 445 divided by 890. How much will you get? Tell me. Let's calculate this. I need calculator. Sorry, I'm very bad in mathematics. <laughs> 445 divided by 890 is equal to 0. 0.5. Okay. So we will have 0. 0.5. Zero 0.5 moles. Okay. All right. Now, check it out. 2 moles of this is giving you 114 CO2 and 110 H2, right? Yes. So, 2 moles of this is giving you 110 H2. The question is asking you for the following reaction, the mass of water produced. What is the mass of water that is produced? That is what you have to tell, right? So, what is given to us is that 2 moles of, let's write it down, C57 H110 O6, yes, is giving you 110 H2O. Correct? 110 H2? Yes. Okay. Now, the question is, if it is 0.5 moles, if it is 0.5 moles of this, how much will I get? What do I have to do? What do I have to do? 110 divided by 2? into 0.5 am i not going to do this i am going to do this so calculate this and tell me what will you get calculate this and tell me how much should you get yes calculate 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 how much will you get 110 divided by 2 is equal to 55 into 0.5 will be 27.5 yes 27.5 correct so this, let me write it down, is 27.5. Now, the only thing that you have to do is, tell me what do you have to do? What do you have to find out? You have to find the mass of water produced. Yes, so how will you find the mass of water? Molecular weight of W, sorry, H2O, sorry. <laughs> Molecular weight of H2O will be 18 into 27.5, yes? 18 multiplied with 27.5 and that will be equal to that will be equal to 495 gram that is your option b cool got it clear everybody this was also easy see you are solving pyqs huh? you're solving pyqs not bad not bad at all Chalo, now choose the molecular formula of an oxide of iron in which the mass percent of iron and oxygen are 69.9 and 30.1 respectively and its molecular mass is and its molecular mass is are question where did it go okay ha huh. molecular mass is 160 everybody read the question once read the question once chalo 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 read the question or should we do this a little later? What do you think? Should we do this a little later? Chalo, let me give this to you as a homework. Okay. Let me give this to you as a homework. You do this on your own and figure it out. Okay. Now, the density of a gas is 1.78 gram per liter at STP. The weight of 1 mole of a gas is... The weight of one mole of a gas is, any idea? Can somebody do this? Quickly guys, quickly, 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 quickly. I think you can do this. I really, really think that you can do this. Come on, read it and find it out. Read it, read it, read it and do this, do this. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 
यू कैन बबा इज वेरी इजी गाइज वेरी इजी जस्ट रीड इट डू इट विद डू इट राइट अवे एंड यू विल सी दैट यू विल बी एबल टू डू इट कम ऑन गाइज कम ऑन I really think you can do it. Seriously, this is very easy. This is very easy, everybody. Chalo. Shall we do it then? Have you solved? You let. Okay. Check. Let's do one thing. I'll do it here. You check the answer. Is that okay? I'll do it here. You check the answer. Chal. ठीक है. So at STP, at STP, do you remember that volume twenty two point four liter? I told you yes. so at stp volume is equal to what 22.4 liters yes yes density is already given to you here density is uh, is is 1.78 1.78 gram per liter yes so what do you have to figure out you have to find the weight that means mass so how do you calculate mass here density is given here volume is given here how will you calculate mass mass will be density multiplied with volume isn't it rho into v which is basically nothing but 22.4 into 1.78 so this must be equal to around 40 because 22 and this is almost equal to 2 so i think option a is the correct answer right yes very easy see All right, all right. Now we have come to something called a stoichiometry. Shall we do it, everybody? Let me just check once again, guys. If this is getting recorded, I just want to see. Yes, it is. It is okay. All right. So stoichiometry and stoichiometry collection. Ah, uh, collection system. So, oh my God, sorry. I think it is just that it's late at night and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and i am already stammering maybe because of uh, sleep but anyway no worries i am going to let go of my sleep today so stoichiometry and stoichiometry calculations not collections okay calculations everybody let's start with it and uh, let's quickly finish it chalo so what is stoichiometry by the way don't say stoichiometry stoichiometry whatever all of these they say it's all just does not exist stoichiometry okay what is stoichiometry let's understand okay stoichiometry my dear student is basically see stoichiometry deals with the calculation of masses okay what does it deal with it deals with calculation of masses okay all right now masses of what in a reaction what do you have in a reaction you have reactants and you have products so stoichiometry deals with the masses of the reactants and the products that are involved in a balanced chemical reaction all right all right everybody makes sense nonsense this makes sense great okay now what happens is we we understand there are there are actually different types of you know calculations okay there are different types of calculations so there is a mole method there is a principle of atom conservation method that is poac then there are also other methods okay that you can follow so let me just tell you what is this mole method and what is this poac poac is principle of atom conservation that means what you would understand is that in a chemical reaction the number of atoms on both the sides should be equal that's it right yes so let's just check it out cool okay what is mole method what is mole method so number 1 let's do it yes number 1 that is mole method how do we calculate it okay so in the mole method you have to understand that balancing of chemical reaction is important balancing is necessary okay yes so let me write it down here that balancing of chemical reaction okay balancing of chemical reaction is required shall we take an example i did take an example even when i was doing that uh, you know topic wise lecture so let me take the same example and the example was uh, kcl o3 I think that was the one that I did. Yes. So, two KCl O three will give out what? It will give you two KCl plus what will you get? Three O two. Yes. 
so 3O2 okay now what are we going to do is what are we going to do check it out here moles of KClO3 divided by the coefficient so 2 this should be equal to this should be equal to moles of KCl divided by 2 yes and then finally equal to moles of O2 divided by what tell me tell me 3 very good very good the answer is 3 absolutely correct okay now coming to POAC method okay POAC method okay all right yes POAC method is what principle of atom conservation method okay in this case balancing of chemical equation is not required everybody okay balancing of chemical equation is not required cool yeah so how are we doing this same reaction let's take let me take KClO3 will give you what KCl plus O2 okay O2 that's the reaction since I just told you that balancing is not required so why do we even have to do it great amazing now changing the color here so that you can differentiate between these okay now what are we going to do is check it out we will write we will write uh, uh, what, what do we write exactly what do we write what do we write what do we POAC of K yes hmm. POAC of K so POAC that means that principle of atom conservation of K we will start with one one element okay of K is equal to what is it yes of K will be what it will be C one mole of KClO3 the coefficient is 1 here, right? I'm not balancing. I'm not balancing. See, 1 mole of KClO3. 1 mole of KClO3. Yes. Yes, 1 mole of KClO3 is equal to 1 mole of KCl. Make sense? Yes. See, here also 1. Here also 1. 1, 1. Right? 1, 1. Both the sides. So, this will be 1 mole of KCl. Correct? Okay? Got it? Great. Now, let's do POAC of uh, Cl. See, here also what is the coefficient? There is no superscript, no subscript, nothing. So, 1 mole of, C, uh, one mole of KClO3 is equal to Cl in KClO3, Cl in KCl, right? That means that it will be 1 mole of KCl. Correct, everybody? Yes. Cl is present in KClO3, Cl is present in KCl, correct? Okay. Now, if I do POAC of O, okay, what do I see? I have a, see, I have three atoms of O, three atoms of O. So, that means that three mole of, three mole of KClO3. Three mole of KClO3 is equal to here what will happen? Two. See? Two mole of O2. Okay. Okay. Alright. That is how you are going to do it. That's it. So this method right now you might not understand. You might feel like, ma'am, what is this? Uh, uh, what is this thing that you are teaching us? We are not understanding. I get it. I get it. No problem. But see, let's let's explain this, okay? So, what did I say? I said that stoichiometry deals with calculation of masses. What are you doing here? You are calculating the masses, okay? Now, sometimes you also calculate the volume, all right? Sometimes you also calculate the volume. Of what? What are you calculating? You are calculating the masses, you are calculating the volume of what? Of the reactants and the products that are involved in a chemical reaction. And is the chemical reaction supposed to be balanced? Absolutely, yes. Especially in case of mole method, what you have to do? Balancing is required, right? Balancing is required. In this case, balancing is not required. What are you doing here in this case in mole method? Yes, you need a ba balanced, uh, balanced chemical reaction. 
Now, when you have the balanced chemical reaction, whatever is the mole of KClO3, you just have to divide it by the coefficient. Yes, coefficient, you just have to divide it. That's your mole method, okay? In case of POAC, that is principle of atom conservation, you just have to see that you are equating the atoms on the LHS and on the RHS. You are equating the atoms on the left hand side and on the right hand side. That's exactly what we did. Now Cl in KClO3, Cl in KCl, K in KClO3, K in KCl. We are just trying to equate that. So here K had only one atom, right? That's what I can see. There is only one atom of K. Here also there is one atom of K because I did not balance it, right? Same here, POAC of CLC, I did not balance it. There is only one Cl atom, one Cl atom here also. Now for oxygen, I see that this side there are three atoms of oxygen, but this side there are two atoms of oxygen. So that's all that I try to equate. That's it, okay? All right, but now we come to something that is very important and that is limiting reagent. Lot of you have had doubt regarding this, but I promise after this class you should not be having any doubt. So what is limiting reagent? Limiting reagent is basically the, the reactant which is completely, which is completely consumed in the reaction and limits the reaction. Okay, so what did I say? The reactant, let me write it down here. Okay, the reactant. which gets com consumed which gets completely consumed in a reaction and uh, limits the reaction is called limiting reagent. Let me give you an example. Okay, we will solve questions also. We will solve questions, but let me give you an example. Okay, so let's see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 slices of bread, okay? And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 slices of cheese. I have asked you to make grilled cheese sandwich, okay? What, what have I asked you? I have asked you to make grilled cheese sandwich, okay? Now for every sandwich, what do you need? You need one cheese slice and two bread slices, right? Yes, you need one cheese slice and two bread slices so what are you doing two bread slices one cheese slice you have got one sandwich here two plus one here one here okay two plus one here you are getting another sandwich here two plus one here you are getting another side but now the bread is remaining but you have less amount of cheese so cheese becomes the limiting reagent you wanted to make more sandwiches but the amount of cheese available stopped you from making the sandwiches right right everybody so that becomes your limiting reagent and 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 now whatever is remaining this bread this becomes your excess reagent make sense nonsense everybody yes this is your lr that is limiting reagent and this is your er excess reagent okay all right now for example in the absence of limiting reagent if you want to have this reaction yes hydrogen plus nitrogen will be forming 2 nh3 right so in the absence of absence of limiting reagent you see that 3 hydrogen gives you 2 nh3 here but but please do note here 6 gram of hydrogen, 28 gram of nitrogen is giving you 34 gram of 2 NH3, right? 34 gram of NH3. But now what if I take a limiting reagent? In the presence of limiting reagent, what will happen is now I have taken instead of taking 6 gram, I'm taking 3 gram. And the coefficient becomes here 1.5. Now what will happen is what the reaction see see how much it changes here it was 34 gram here it is 17 gram of nh3 
only 17 gram of NH3 is formed and rest of the NH3, 14 gram it becomes your excess reagent because you took less amount of hydrogen it did not allow the formation of NH3 completely getting my point yes so basically what we have to do in a limiting reagent question is that just divide the given moles of each reactant by their stoichiometric coefficient the one that has the least ratio is your limiting reagent let's do a question and find out Chalo. see here you have a reaction that is 3a plus 6b gives you 3c plus 5d yes and you are given the mole given mole everybody okay given mole is that a has 9 mole 3a and then you have b has 6b 27 mole what did i write here i just said that you are just supposed to divide by the stoichiometric coefficient divide so 9 divided by 3 and 27 divided by c 6 so 3 3 is a 9 okay 3 and then this will be 3 3 is a 9 and then uh, 9 3 is a 27 yes 3 sorry sorry 3 2 is a 6 3 2 is a 6 and 3 9 is a 27 so this is 9 by 2 that means it is a 4.5 which one is less this is less so that means a is limiting a is lr a is your limiting reagent easy peasy biryani tasty right very easy this is exactly my point now we come to your we are almost reaching to concentration terms but before that let's understand what is percentage yield okay percentage yield as in how much is the percentage that you are getting yield means produce what is the amount that is produced now here you are talking in terms of percentage so obviously what do you have to do multiply it with 100 right percentage yield of product is any product that is formed in a reaction how will you find out what is the yield how much did you get right so how will you calculate it nothing actual yield actually what did you get so actual yield divided by theoretical maximum yield multiplied with 100 okay that's your first formula now write it down please i hope that you have a copy and a pen now concentration of the solution so you understand the solution what is the solution my dear student yes let's let's write it down here what is the solution everybody a solution basically has c a solution basically has a solute plus solvent now when we are talking about concentration we are basically asking how much of solute is present how much of solute is present in a solution right and that is why we want to find the concentration terms whenever we are making a solution of course you will you will be studying about this in your 12th standard solution chapter as well but it is just better if you complete it right now okay so mass percent first of all we talk about is mass percent what is mass percent how do we write mass percent basically you write it as mass of solute yes divided by what will you write divided by mass of solution only right divided by mass of solution multiplied with 100 see mass percent right so you will write this now what is a symbol the symbol my dear student is w by w percentage okay that's how you write it okay w by w or just w by w percentage now have you ever seen a medicine like this you know lactitol monohydrate yeah and in this do you see 66.67 percent w by v it is written what is written w by v that means mass divided by volume right what is it mass by volume percent we are talking about so that means we are going to write here mass of solute divided by volume of solution multiplied with 100 because it's percent right 
Yes, everybody. Now tell me something. Do you see that in the denominator there is volume? That means that volume changes with temperature, isn't it? And if volume does change with temperature, that means this is also temperature dependent. So if you change temperature, this will change. Yes, this will change. So this is temperature dependent. Okay. This term is temperature dependent. All right. Yes. Moving on. <clears throat> volume percent next is volume percent so what is volume percent obviously nothing much it will just be volume of solute correct right everybody yes it will be volume of solute divided by volume of solution multiplied with 100 because volume percent, right? Ha, now we have come to mole fraction. What is mole fraction, guys? Mole fraction is nothing but, nothing but mole of solute divided by total moles of solution. Yes, what is mole fraction? Moles of solute divided by total moles of solution okay all right yeah cool now uh, now if you have to find the, uh, the 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 mole fraction of solvent so this will be mole fraction of solute or Okay, this will be mole fraction of solute or let's just say that solute is A. Okay, solute is the A component. Basically, A plus B is equal to your solution. If I'm saying then A is the solute. So, I can write it as chi A. Okay, all right. So, that means my chi B mole fraction of a solvent will be moles of solvent divided by absolutely right total moles of solution all right yes this is your chi b now you know what if you add these two your chi a plus chi b because it's fraction it is always supposed to be equal to y this is something that you have to remember okay then we come to molarity. What is molarity? Bachalo? Molarity is basically the number of moles of solute that is present in 1 liter of solution. What is it? Number of, number of moles of solute present in 1 liter of solution. See here volume has come. That means this is also temperature dependent, isn't it? Yes. So, how do we write it? We will write it as the formula will be number of moles of solute divided by what? Total volume of solution in liters. Yes. So, volume of solution in liters is this temperature dependent yes this is also temperature dependent okay great moving on now we have something called as molality not molarity molality yes so what is molality guys how do you how do we define molality we will define molality as the number of moles of solute present in 1 kg of solvent the number of moles of solute in 1 kg of solvent okay in 1 kg of solvent very good yes so how do we write the formula then how do we write the formula the formula will be now I mean it's just written only here you can just write it right 
number of moles of solute divided by 1 kg of solvent. Oh, achha, by the way, did you just notice that this is about solvent, not solution? We are not talking about solution, we are only talking about solvent. Okay, so mass of solvent in kg. Cool. Okay, then we come to parts per million. By the way, just like parts per million, you also have parts per billion if you want to write. However, parts per billion is, uh, parts per billion, I don't think you will get uh, any question like this in the exam. Parts per million is, I think, enough, right? Yes, so what is it? Parts per million, number of, number of solute only, right? No, mass of solute. What? Ha. Mass of solute. Divided by what? Divided by mass of solvent. Mass of solvent into 10 to the power 6. Okay. That's your another answer. Now let's do a question here. Chalo. Let's do a question. So calculate the molarity and molality of a 98% by mass of H2SO4 solution having a density of 1.25 gram per cc gram per cc is basically nothing but your density only so don't worry don't think that you don't know this you definitely do Shall we do it then? Okay. So what is given? Calculate the molarity as well as the molality. Now if you do this, I promise you that you will be able to solve pretty much everything. Okay. So 98% uh, by mass of H2SO4. So 98% mass of H2SO4, right? That means that What does 98% of H2SO4 mean? Huh? That means that in 100 gram of solution, 98 gram of H2SO4 is present, right? That means that in 100 gram solution, yes? 98 gram H2SO4 present, correct everybody? Yes? Okay, great. Now what do we have to find out? We have to find that, um, okay, mass of solution we already know now. Mass of solution is 100 gram, correct. Yes, mass of solute also we know. Ninety-eight gram, correct. Yes. Then what happens? So what will be mass of solvent? What will be mass of solvent? Very easy. Yes. Hundred minus ninety-eight is equal to two gram. I mean, of course. Yes, and that two gram I can also write it as zero point. Uh, how many zeros, my dear student? How many zeros? Zero point zero zero two kg. Correct? Oh, makes sense? Nonsense? Makes sense, right? Okay. Now what do we have to do is, uh, chalo, let's do moles now. So moles of uh, solute. Let's calculate. Yeah. Moles of solute. That means H two S O four. How do we calculate moles of solute, bicha? Moles of solute will be C. This is my given mass and if you calculate this also, the molecular mass of H2SO4 is also 98. So 98 divided by 98 is equal to 1. Yes. Okay. Great. Then let's calculate volume of solution. 
what is volume of solution volume of solution will be mass by density mass by density what is mass what is mass 100 gram yes 100 gram correct what is density 1.25 so 100 by 1.25 will be equal to how much 100 by 1.25 chalo let's calculate this then i need calculator baba i really do not know how to calculate it faster 80 80 milliliter which means that it is how much 0 0.08 liter great okay now next what do we have to do next what do we have to do everybody yes now we will have to find the molarity yes we have found uh, mass moles yes volume of solution everything let's find molarity what is molarity log? right now only we just wrote it yes what is molarity if you want you can check it out see what is molarity number of moles of solute divided by volume of solution in in liter so that means that one divided by what will it be what will it be moles of solute divided by volume right so see moles of solute divided by volume bacha yes so that means that 1 divided by 0 0.08 right yes calculate this and find out how much is the answer okay then let's find out molality now what is molality formula i just now told it told you what is molality number of moles of solute divided by mass of solvent in kg yes so moles of solute divided by mass of solvent in kg what is mass of solvent here mass of solvent is see 0 0.002 kg yes sorry that means that it is 1 by 0 0.002 kg am i right yes exactly all right so this also you figure it out okay and you will get the answer Chal. Now, this is very, very, very important, everybody. This is where most of your J questions will come from, okay? This is exactly where most of your J questions will come from. We will solve a question. Don't worry again. Yes? So, chalo. Relation between molality, molarity, density of a solution and molar mass of solute. Very important. There have been a lot of questions from this and from this relation, okay? Okay? So, how do you calculate this? You write molality, small m everyone. Molality is denoted by small m is equal to, is equal to 1000 into m, okay? 1000 into m divided by 1000 into d density, okay? Density minus molarity and then m naught what is m naught m naught is mass of solute this formula you will have to remember it we will do a question right away we will do a question now only don't worry now relationship between molality and mole fraction chi b of the solute yes how do we do it so m is equal to m is equal to chi b yes 1 minus chi b multiplied with 1000 divided by m a mass of solute okay mass of solute all right yes now let's solve this everybody Chalo. so a 6.50 molar solution of koh aqueous has a density of 1.89 gram per centimeter cube the molarity of solution is mole per dmq round off to the nearest integer atomic mass of k is 39.0 unit uh, o is 16.0 h is 1.0 so the most of time most of the time these data will be available to you all right this data will be given to you okay so same thing that we have to do the, uh, the 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 formula that i just showed you yes this molality m so let's do it here everyone m is equal to thousand into 
capital M, big M, okay. Then we write 1000 D minus M, M naught, okay. So what is molality? Molality is given to you that 6.50 is equal to 1000 into what is the molarity everybody? What is the molarity? The molarity of the solution is ho. Molarity of the solution is what mole? Molarity of the solution is, uh, oh, that is what you have to calculate, I guess. Right? That is what you have to calculate, isn't it? Yeah. So, let's write it like this. Then, 1000 D. D is given to you, see? 1.89. So, 1000 into 1.89. 8.9, yes, then minus M and what is M naught? M naught will be 56 KOH, right? So, 39, 16, do it. That will be 56, okay? All right, M 56 or 56 M also we could have written. Right, now what are we doing? Now just calculate this, that's it. Just calculate, you just have to cross multiply from here and then calculate this. But chalo, let me make it a little easier for you here, okay. Mm, it will be 6.50. This will be 1890 minus, let's write 56M here is equal to 1000M, right? Okay. This if you calculate, calculate this guys. Now I think you will have, you will be able to calculate. Yes, this will be 6.501890, right? So 6 into 8 will be around 12 to 85 minus 56 into 6.50, 36. 4m yes this i can bring it here minus 1000 m okay yes this if i do then m can be taken common if i take m common what will i do this and this 1364 12 2 2 8 5 so 12 2 8 5 divided by 1, 3, 6, 4. Now calculate this. This much I have done. That's your answer, okay? That's your answer. Chal. Final few points of the chapter. We are almost done here. Molarity is actually the most common unit of measuring, okay? Yes, most common unit of, most common unit of measuring the strength of solution. It is molarity, okay? Now, the product of molarity and volume of the solution, it will give the number of moles of the solution. Okay, moles of the solute, yes. So, N is equal to mole molarity into volume, okay. If all the formula of strength have amount of solute, that is weight of weight or moles in the numerator, all the formula of strength that you see, yes, in this case, if you see, see number of moles of solute, yes, moles of solute, Volume of solute is there, so not this. Mass of solute, see, do you see? Do you understand what we are saying here? All of them have, in the numerator, yes, you will find amount of solute. And all the formula that have amount of solution in the denominator, except for molality. All right, these are the important points that you can remember. Once you write down all the formula in a sheet, and then just cross-refer with these points to remember, I think you will understand, okay? Now we come to dilution law everybody. So when a solution is diluted, when a solution is diluted, basically what are you doing when a solution is diluted? When a solution is diluted, all you are doing is you are adding some more amount of, some more amount of water, isn't it? Yes, when a solution is being diluted, basically what you are doing is you are adding more amount of water. But do you understand that the solute, the amount of solute remains the same, isn't it? That's exactly what it is saying. It's saying that when a solution is diluted, more solvent is added. You are adding more water to it, but the moles of solute remains unchanged. 
So if the volume of a solution have a molarity of M1 and volume is V1, it will be equal to molarity M2 and volume V2. Are you understanding? Yes, you are only doing is, what you are doing is, you are changing the volume from V1 to V2, right? So what you can do is, you can write it as M1 V1 is equal to M2 V2 because moles of solute remains the same. Moles of solute will remain the same because you have not added any more solute, right? All you have done is added more amount of solvent, okay? Now, let's take a look at effect of temperature on concentration. So, you know that molality and mole fraction are preferred over molarity. Why? Because molarity is temperature dependent whereas molality and mole fraction are not everybody, right? They are not, okay? Sorry, back is paining, that's why. Yeah. Okay, so I think uh, that's it. This was the only important part here. Ah, let's solve a question. Let's solve a question, everybody. Chal. Read this question. Read this question fast, everybody. Read this question fast. Till then, I am gonna drink some water. Come on, guys. Hmm. Done, done. What do you all say? Shall we do it? For per gram of reactant, the maximum quantity of N2 gas is produced in which of the following thermal decomposition reaction? Ooh, this is going to be big. This is going to be big. I don't want to do it. Do you want to do it? I think I've already done it once. But chalo, theke, let's. <laughs> Just kidding. See how teachers are doing, right? Just like you. Anyway. All right, so uh, what do we have? We have 2NH4NO3S, uh, 2N2 plus 4H2O plus O2. Okay. All right, so uh, we have 2NH4NO3. Yes, is, are, is giving 2N2 plus 4H2. Correct? This is the reaction. Oh, plus O2 is also there. This is the reaction. Okay. So, that means that 2 moles of NH4NO3, how much are you getting? You are getting 2 moles of N2. You are getting 2 moles of N2. Right? Now, Molar mass of what is the molar mass of NH4NO3? Everybody, can you calculate? Yes, how much will it be? 4NO3 mm, NN that is 4 uh, in 14, 4 mm -hmm. in 14, um, 4 8, 2. 80? 80, right? 80 only, no? But tell, tell me if it is correct or not. You tell me, guys. Okay. So that means that 80 uh, gram of NH4NO3 is 1 mole. Correct? Yes. Now, if I say that 1 gram of 1 gram of NH3, NH4NO3 will be basically 1 by 80, 1 by 80 into 1. Calculate this, how much will it be? Calculate this, how much will it be? Two, three, two, five. I don't know, tell me, is it 0 0.023 or 0 0.025, maybe. 5 is it hmm? now exactly like this what you have to do is you have to do it for all the rest of the ones and then calculate okay all right do it for all the rest and then calculate okay all right everybody I think let's move on towards the last topic for today 
this is the correct answer once you calculate for all of them you will find that option d is the correct answer now let's study volumetric strength or strength of hydrogen peroxide okay shall we do it chalo So this is the last topic for the uh, last topic of this chapter and that is volumetric strength of H2O2 that is volumetric strength of hydrogen peroxide very easy peasy not not so difficult okay so let's um, x x be the volume of hydrogen peroxide okay x volume hydrogen peroxide okay all right if x volume of hydrogen peroxide is there now what if i say that 1 liter of hydrogen peroxide 1 liter of hydrogen peroxide let's say gives x liter of oxygen at stp okay all right what did i say i said that 1 liter of hydrogen peroxide gives let's say x liter of o2 at stp right that's what i said correct that's what i said okay all right if that is the case if that is the case now tell me what if the reaction is what if the reaction is 2h2o2 gives you 2H2O plus O2 makes sense. 2H2O, 2O, O2. Yes. Okay. Great. So that means that 2 mL of this is producing 1 mL of oxygen, right? Right, everybody. Yes. So 2H2O2. This is your reaction. Okay, this is your reaction. If this is your reaction, that means that two mole of hydrogen peroxide is giving one mole of oxygen. Right, everyone? Yes. Okay. If two mole is giving you one mole, that means that two mole is also One into twenty-two point four liter. Is that correct? STP. Yes. At STP. Correct. Okay. Now, if this is the case, then tell me, then tell me something. How much of one liter of oxygen? Don't you think that one liter of oxygen now will be basically? It will be two divided by twenty-two point four. Yes. It will be. right great 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 if that is the case i don't have space to write i took too much okay let's write it here then so 2 by 22.4 1 liter of oxygen will give you this much uh, you know what let me teach you this again
All right, guys, we have come to the last topic of today's session that is volumetric strength of hydrogen peroxide H2O2. Okay, so uh, let's let's just do this and we will complete the whole session. Okay, all right, so let yes, Are, what's going on? Why am I not able to write? Huh, okay, so X volume hydrogen peroxide okay all right yes now what we're going to do is what we're going to do is let's just say that let's just say that one liter of hydrogen peroxide okay one liter of hydrogen produce per, uh, one liter of hydrogen peroxide gives you x liter of oxygen at stp okay all right what did i say i said that one liter of H2O2 gives X liter at STP of O2. Okay. Why am I not able to do this? Oh my God, what an annoying scene. All right, guys, the last topic of today's session is volumetric strength of hydrogen peroxide okay all right and after this we will be uh, done okay after this we will be done so uh, let's say let's say that uh, let's say that one liter of hydrogen peroxide gives x liter of oxygen at stp what did i say i said that let's say that one liter of h2o2 gives x liter of o2 at stp okay all right if that is the case now let's write down the reaction here reaction is 2 h2 o2 gives you 2 h2 o plus o2 right now from here I can clearly see that 2 mole of hydrogen peroxide is actually giving me 1 mole of oxygen. Am I right everybody? Am I right? Yes. Okay. So that means that if 2 mole is there I can also write it as 1 into 22.4 liters because it, it is at STP. Right? Okay. Great. If that is the case then tell me something. <coughs> tell me something. What if I take here 1 liter now? If I take 1 liter of oxygen, that, that means that it will be 2 divided by 22.4, right? And if I take here x liter, that means that it will be 2 divided by 22.4 multiplied with x. Am I right, everyone? Yes, that means 2x divided by 22.4, yes? So, from here, from here, what I see is, from here, what I see is, everybody, take a look at it, take a look at it, yes? Now, moles of hydrogen peroxide, yes, what, what is the moles of hydrogen peroxide? 2x divided by 22.4, which I can also write it as x divided by 11.2, yes, it will get cancelled, right everybody? Great, 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 great. Now, molarity, molarity that is capital M is equal to, what will it be? Capital M equal to? H2O2 divided by volume yes divided by volume so that means that it will be x divided by 11.2 and what is the volume volume is what 1 liter volume is 1 liter of H2O2 so that means this is the answer this is the answer x by 11.2 correct yes that means that m is equal to x by 11.2 you can remember this you can remember this and that's it that's it that's it that's where we end the session today thank you so much for watching i hope that you all understood everything and yes we will be very soon doing a, a, a problem solving uh, class as well so stay tuned to this channel i'll see you soon very soon everybody and all the very best bye